Okay, so let's just get them on now. We're joined by athletic directors of Martinsburg High School, Davis Moore, and Musselman High School, Steve Campbell. How are you guys doing today? Oh, can't complain. Happy to be here with you guys. Good. Good. Thanks for having us. So, a new fundraising, I, I, just describe what it is, a fundraising venture for all the athletic departments in the county? Yeah, so uh, Steve and I have been kind of sitting on this for two or three years. Uh, got the idea from Hampshire High School. Uh, so what it basically is, is all four high schools here in the area have created a legacy fund. Um, and what that entails is uh, donations from our community members, alumni, anybody who wants to that will go directly to each uh, high school separately throughout the county. And those funds will then go to different uh, aspects of our um, athletic departments in each school. And I know Steve has a little bit more information on exactly what Hampshire did and what they were able to get accomplished. Yeah, when Hampshire kicked theirs off, they had a, a massive project of turf, which you can see, feel, and touch. And with the support of our county board of ed and our community to pass the bond, those large ticket items are not what we're talking about fundraising for. This is more of a program where you can go online and contribute monthly and a specific amount in $5 increments. And that will just continue to flow into each of the particular schools. And uh, we kind of like to, the easiest thing, especially for uh, people that around our generation is it's kind of like a Netflix subscription. You don't go in every month, um, you sign up, it takes that dollar amount each month out of your account. You don't have to worry about it. Um, each month it'll draw $5 out, $20 out, and then those that money goes directly to the school of your choice, uh, Martinsburg, Musselman, Hedgesville, or Spring Mills. And then that funds um, will be allocated to um, specific things, mostly of which benefit our kids and um, enrich their athletic experience. And, and when we talk about funding and where this money goes in the accountability piece, it's important to know that we're, we're going to form committees at each of our high schools that, at least from Muslims' perspective, will include five team sports coaches and five individual sport coaches, as well as the AED and the principal. Now, ultimately, all school funds are up to the building principal, so the final signature will come from that person. But I think collectively having all the sports represented rotating off and on year after year will help us spread the wealth of all of this um, to football, which people think it might think it would all go there. That isn't really not the case. Um, we will take care of uh, tennis, swimming, wrestling. Those non-revenue sports have some needs as well, not nearly to the expense of those team sports. But there are issues that come up with each of those, every one of our sports. We've just got, we've just grown to so many sports, dealing with so many student athletes, and the, and the funds that we have coming from our gate receipts and what other small projects the athletics departments do quickly gets erased by cost and I'll let Davis mention some of the costs associated with all of our sports programs for a year maybe I'll add on afterwards yeah so just uh, I think a lot of people look at uh, predominantly football and they see that we have huge crowds uh, what sometimes people don't realize is first of all before we go into a football game we're fifteen hundred dollars in the hole by that i'm talking about paying our referees paying our chain crew paying our security our ticket takers uh etc on that uh with that uh what's kind of crazy is steve and i were talking on the way here uh, one of the costs that just continues to add up is a, a football cost hundred dollars and you can't play with just one football for a year a uh, volleyball costs around 80 a basketball costs around 100 and that money that we use to buy those things comes directly from our ticket sales uh, for people coming to game and other outside sometimes sponsorships and that things um, with that the uh, the county does take care of us they uh, pay our coaches salaries they take care of our transportation needs uh, they help us with 
rental of facilities and keeping the facilities up and going. Uh, but this is uh, us asking our community, our alumni, our supporters to let's get our kids number one in the state, take care of them. We're the growing area. Uh, let's make sure our kids get what they deserve. Just to piggyback on that, and I know these numbers off the top of my head pretty well, people sometimes don't realize the cost that it takes to run an athletic program, especially a high school our size. We're looking at roughly $45,000 to pay for all of our officials. Now, there's over 100 contests, and it's varsity, JV, and freshmen in some cases. But beyond that, we have the huddle subscription thing that all the coaches use now that is you know upwards to ten thousand dollars we have a pool rental fee we pay for our you know the game workers and stuff and security and that's not gonna that's not gonna be something we're gonna slack on none of that stuff can be taken away we also have to do reconditioning for all of our football helmets and along with the uh, increased price of outfitting a football player those helmets need to go back every single year and that is about $6,000 just to do the helmets. Beyond that, we also provide, you know, our county was nice enough to pick up the tab on an athletic trainer position. There was no funding for supplies. So that's another 8,000 basically cost to us. So there's a lot of intangible pieces wrapped up into this whole thing. And if you add those numbers up I just mentioned, we're well over $100,000. That's getting pretty close to what we take in in all of our sports over the year without buying a single piece of equipment. Or uniform. So That's a lot of money. It is. And we're just running thin. Transportation is not going to go away. You know, we, we pay probably $20,000 on any given year to travel to Huntington, Wheeling, Parkersburg, or Charleston for the state tournament. And we get about 20% of that back. But 80% of that cost has to come from what we generate. I was, so, gonna, I was gonna ask, uh, you guys mentioned that you got this idea from Hampshire. How successful was it for them? And, and again, I guess just how do people exactly donate to this program? Steve, you want to talk about Hampshire? I'll take care of the other part. Hampshire had a, a really good gig. They got in with uh, Bank of Romney, and they were able to front a healthy portion of that money. But Trey Stewart, who's the AD up there, worked this out probably four years ago, and they got to 1,000 units in a unit in their world was a five dollar monthly amount so he has gone through that prior to covid survived all through covid which was a rough time for everybody and one of the reasons why we did not roll this thing out sooner but he has maintained and increased a little bit so a, a small county like hampshire got behind it and it has been really a great thing for them, so much so that I think they're getting into phase two of the grand scale projects. They're, they're doing it more like what we have in the bond rather than yearly budget monies. And as far as signing up for it, uh, Steve, and I, Steve and I have both been kind of had the idea of this is a grassroots movement. Uh, we want to get out and talk to people at games. We want to get out and uh, have our coaches uh, who have connections with the community talk about this. Um, and what it ends up happening is once we field any questions, once we give all the details, answer anything that anybody has, anybody that's interested in doing this, uh, we will blast out our the link on our social media, on our school pages. Uh, we're going to have flyers printed out, brochures that give a basic overview of it. But as far as signing up for it, it's really simple. You just sign up, go to the account, create an account, decide if you want to do 5, 10, 15, 20, however much you are willing to do for each month, and it will pull it out uh, directly from your bank account. So I got a question on Facebook from Buck Huffmaster. Does a donor have the option of earmarking his or her donation to a specific sport only, or is it just going to be for everyone, for all the sports? 
Hey, Buck, how you doing? <laughs> we have thought about that, and we've had multiple questions on it. And as an AD, we still have booster groups that will fundraise for the luxury items. Let's say a team wants to take a trip that is overnight to North Carolina. That is not what we are looking for money. That is still a team decision, their boosters, what, whatever that head coach wants to do. So those luxury types of things would end up, the rich would get rich and the poor would get poorer. So, you know, we all know football is big, basketball is big, you know, whatever sports you think is big. They would end up with a large amount of funding here and a sport that is not as well known or even a non-revenue sport um, may end up with little to nothing and, and as the gatekeepers for the school's athletic funding we need to be able to you know spread this across 17 different sports 33 different sports teams when you count freshman JV and varsity so we've sort of stayed away from going on that angle people would still have an opportunity to go to a booster cl club and say, hey, I want to give you $1,000 because you're taking this trip. And they'll still do their fundraisers for some of those luxury things. But we want to maintain our places. And people have been to the various stadiums around, and some of the fencing and some of the roofing and some of the paint, it, it, it is not Northern Virginia. We're not going to ever get to be Northern Virginia. But we can certainly make it look a little better than what it is right now, but not without funding. Yeah. And uh, we definitely, with that, never want to step on our booster organizations uh, because they can still have their bonanzas, their golf tournaments, their s selling of goods. We don't want to take away from that. We just want our community support that mostly probably everybody knows that listening that Martinsburg has had historically, Musselman has historically. And the other two schools, Hedgesville and Spring Mills, is growing. Um, we're just asking for that community and involvement to help us grow, help our kids, uh, like I said, be premier in the state and give them every opportunity for success. And it, on top of that, this whole program is titled, the, in, in our case, the Muslim High School Legacy Program. And if you've been around kids in sports, there is a tremendous passion for kids to play sport X, Y, and Z. And this is a great opportunity for a person who played 20 years ago. Maybe they live in the area, maybe they live in California. A great opportunity to build the legacy for Mossman High School Athletics or Martinsburg or the Cardinals or Hedgesville. So I think, you know, all coming together, the only way this is going to fly and be an improvement is if we have sheer numbers. And our goal is to get to a thousand on the south end. Um, every school has sort of made that there. We'd like to get a thousand donors. And once we get to that thousand, excuse me, <coughs> once we get to that thousand number, we are gonna pull off the student transportation activity, whatever that $20 fee is. We'll remove that so that our kids don't have that burden on them. We'll also remove the paywall from our huddle, huddle cameras that so that people can view without having to go through a paywall and pay seven dollars or 15 or 80 for the year so we have tied in some things but we've got to get to that we've got to base everything off of large numbers my question was just a kind of quick one is the launch date already here or is the launch date coming up for when this uh begins and when people can start donating so the funny thing is Steve and I have been ready to launch this for three years now. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, all of our, uh, le my website is live now. I haven't shared the link yet. Uh, we're still waiting for some documentation to hand out uh, at different contests. We kind of want to make sure that um, we're not telling the same story three, four times. Once we're able to get going on the ground, we want to just keep running with it. Um, so I would say probably within the next week or so, all four high schools should be live. Um, hopefully get started right before the football seasons, home games, uh, volleyball games, and have different pamphlets and stuff. So hopefully I'd say within the next week. 
Yeah, I'll piggyback on and say, yeah, that we, we've been waiting a while. We've had a lot of eyes and ears involved in this. Uh, I've probably talked to 50 people myself just because we want to make sure we've gone slow and made sure it's, it is the right way to do this and, and the terminology is in there, although we can't back ourselves in the corner and, I, and get 100% specific. Um, but I think we've got a, a great product um, and quite honestly, again, it's going back to your communities and saying, hey, Davis Moore, do you feel like a self-tax on yourself of five bucks? And it's his choice. To, it's not government implemented. It's not forced down anybody's throat. But if Davis feels like he can afford to skip that Big Mac once a month and put that toward Martinsburg High School, then, you know, that's pretty easy. No, I'm good. I was going to say, uh, you mentioned that this didn't affect, like, big projects, but I do know that, or at least there was a rumor, I believe, that Musselman and Hedgesville were going to get turf at some point. So is that still in, in the process? That was a part of the bond package okay. that our county passed back, um, was that in November of last year? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and that, that was part of that whole building package of $236 million, I believe, and that that passed mightily thank you to the community um, in those things the lights for tennis the the turf at the two stadiums the track um, softball field at martinsburg softball and i think spring mills baseball um, complex yeah those things those are already taken care of gotcha. um otherwise we'd be talking to you about those specific things for this um that's it in a nutshell. Is there an update on when you all will get turf next summer? Is that? Well, I can tell you this. At the last board meeting, they hired an engineer, and um, that person is going to oversee the planning. It takes quite a while yeah. to do what they're doing. And let's not forget, our primary piece is to graduate kids from high school. And while we know and understand that student athletics is the greatest deterrent of dropping out of school in the world, um, we have the ultimate responsibility to get the school buildings taken care of. So by by far and away, the larger amount of those monies and jobs or those projects should be toward building newer schools, remodeling schools, or taking care of a bunch of roofs right now. And the athletic piece is a small piece of that. Anything else, guys? Is there anything else you guys want to push before we get out of here? Yeah, just one quick thing, and uh, I, I know Steve touched on it a little bit, but the accountability factor. Um, if I'm donating, no dating money, I want to know where it goes. And I think a big part of that will be the communication from each uh, athletic director via our websites, via our social media. If, if we are able to use these funds for new cross-country uniforms, you're going to be notified about it. Uh, we're going to post pictures. We're going to show where your money's going to. Um, and we want to make sure that the community, our fan base, knows that, hey, this is going for the kids. Uh, and that's both my and Steve's biggest plan with this because, like I said multiple times, our kids are our number one resource. We want to make sure that we're taking care of them. All right, guys, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll see you around here in the next couple of weeks as athletic season gets started.